Today on Monkey Life. A visit from the vet for newcomer Capuchin Matty, who's come off worse in a battle for the top spot with leader Erico. That, I think, is a bit of bone. That looks infected and pretty necrotic to me. The birth of a new baby woolly monkey is captured on camera. She went into labour and all happened quite quickly, and we have confirmed that is a little girl. And cool as a cucumber, the orangutans enjoy frozen treats as the temperature soars. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Hopefully she'll walk in as well as he did, so this would be fantastic. Fingers crossed. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 25 different species. Since its inception 35 years ago, Monkey World has rescued more than 430 primates from across the globe, with differing needs and a variety of backgrounds. The secret to the park's success has been providing them with individual care, a safe space and, most importantly, a family. But it takes knowledge, skill and time to settle individual animals into fully integrated groups. Hand. Boy. Capuchins Matty and Louie are a case in point. They arrived a few months ago from a zoo in Wales and are now part of Erico's group of 11. But their integration is still a work in progress and it's currently more about male Matty than female Louie. During the day, the whole group, including the newcomers, are together. But at night, they have to be separated. That's because the care team suspect Matty has been challenging dominant male Erico for the top spot. And he's definitely come off worse in the battle. Hello, how are you guys doing? Hello. Which is why wildlife vet Nick Masters has been called in to check him over. He has several injuries, really, which he sustained during the introductions that we've done into Erico's group. Um, most of them are healing okay, but one injury in particular is on one of his fingers and he's got a bit of bone sticking out, which isn't ideal. He's going to get it caught. It's a tract for infection, so we really just need to snip that bone off so the finger can then heal really nicely. Matty has been giving almost as good as he gets. Erico also has a number of cuts and bruises. I've got a picture if you want to see. From today? I mean, yeah. Great. That'd be great, yeah. It's, um... Goodness, yeah. I mean, I don't think trying to do a primary closure on that, you know, cleaning all the edges up and suturing them together yeah. is a sensible well, option. Old He'll just, anyway that yeah. I've now joined in the middle, yeah. so there's so much granulation tissue that yeah. we have to divide. So it's, it's just got to heal by secondary intention. So and we can go and have a proper look at him once we finish with Matty. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. to make triple E, triple yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Nick will have a closer look at Erico's injuries later. Oh, Matty. But first he needs to deal with Matty's fingers and toes. So that is displaced completely, and that, is I think, bone? is a bit of bone. Mm -hmm. That looks infected and pretty necrotic to me. I think that's got to come off. That's digit three on his hind right. And that, as you predicted, is bone. Mm -hmm. So that one's got to come off. So that's digit four, as you said, front right. Not one, but two digits need to be amputated. He's got a lot of superficial injuries, and he's got a couple of nastier ones. Um, they really do go at each other, so uh, I'm going to do some uh, partial amputations in two digits, so take the ends off them where he's got broken bone or dislocation. Um, it's the only way that they're going to heal up really nicely, I think. And it's not just Matty's hands and feet that have been damaged. Oh, he has lost his canine. He's broken it, hasn't he? It's completely gone. Look. Upper right canine is yeah. fractured. Once the area has been cleaned and disinfected, Nick begins the operation. OK, going to start cutting. It's a fiddly but fairly straightforward procedure. Nick has to remove all the infected bone and surrounding tissue. Unfortunately, the finger is worse than first thought. 
So to get back to healthy tissue, gonna to I'm going to have to take out this other bit of bone. I'm afraid. Let's go right back to the knuckle. Let's take the, let's take the whole thing out, I think. After removing the entire finger, Nick stitches the wound, making it as secure as possible to avoid reinfection and interference from the patient or his capuchin housemates. Turns a lot on the character of the animal as well, I think, is my experience. It's always a little bit of a lottery. Hopefully, we'll do this well enough that it stays together. The loss of a finger shouldn't be too much of an impediment for Matty. It doesn't seem to hinder them at all. They just carry on. They've still got the rest of their fingers to use to forage and feed and everything with. And yeah, so he shouldn't really notice the difference at all. The digit on Matty's right foot isn't as bad. Nick only has to remove the end section. So it's not exactly cosmetic surgery, but it will hopefully be fully functional. So happy with both back feet. Fingers and toes sorted, there's still one final job to do. Remove Matty's broken canine. It's a gruelling task, but it needs to be done to avoid future infection. 30 minutes of prodding and pulling later. One tooth removed. I think that looks okay. Much better, um, came together much better than I was expecting. Good, okay. Wakey up time, yeah? Matty has been under anaesthetic for 90 minutes. Sometimes it just goes that way, but at least he's sorted now. We've had a good look at all of his various injuries. He's had a good clean. Um, but yeah, he seems a pretty tough guy, so I think it'll probably take him quite a while to come round. He's been under anaesthetic for a long time. So we'll keep an eye on him, but hopefully, you know, come tomorrow, he'll be back to his normal self and we can consider putting some friends back in with him again. While Matty recovers from his surgery, Nick takes the opportunity to have a close look at Erico's wounds. I still don't think it's a surgery. OK, fine. Absolutely convinced it's not. Nick is satisfied the injuries will heal quickly. The two competing males will need to be kept apart for the next few days. But it'll give them a chance to lick their wounds. It's been an anxious few weeks for the Woolly Monkey team, who've been awaiting the arrival of Olivia's first baby. It was impossible to know the exact due date, so everyone was on tenterhooks until yesterday, when the infant finally arrived. So Olivia has had a little baby girl. Uh, she went into labour and all happened quite quickly. And within about 25 minutes of noticing that she had gone to labour, we did have a little baby arrive and we have confirmed that is a little girl. The birth was captured by Lydia on her mobile phone. So it was very exciting seeing her going through the contractions and pushing and the actual head coming out. She did nip around the side for the, the final birth um, in the playroom area, so we didn't actually see the full birth. Um, but it was very interesting to see and how the group were reacting. They were kind of uh, giving her space, but also very interested as to what was going on. So it was nice that everyone was very respectful. And then not long after the baby was born, you know, Zingu came over and had a look, Lavar came over and had a look. So it was, it was very interesting and very exciting and definitely worth staying late for. It's been 24 hours since she gave birth, but first time mum Olivia is doing well. She is looking a little exhausted by the experience, but taking great care of her newborn daughter. She's, she's doing OK, you know, she's showing a lot of interest um, in the baby, you know, she's allowing the baby to feed. She's being sensible, so we are seeing her, you know, making decisions about moving around and making sure the baby is held on um, nicely. She isn't maybe as much as what Zingu does, who's generally always got an arm there, just double supporting that baby, making sure it's OK. But the baby is doing well. Um, she's adapted to life quite well. Um, Sometimes, you know, she kind of goes, oh, I'm going over here now, and it goes, oh, actually, I've got, I've got this baby I've got to think about. Uh, so sometimes she might have a little momentary lapse, but uh, she's doing really well, especially for a first-time mum. In an unusual set of circumstances, the primate care team now have two newborn babies in the same group to look out for. Just eight days ago, Zingu gave birth to her fifth infant. Zingu's just, you know, she's so good at it and she's done so many babies now that she just carries on really. Um, so it's very exciting that we have got two babies less than two weeks apart. So watching them grow up together 
and you know finding you know all the things that they can do with their tails and climbing and playing is going to be really nice to watch. For the next few days, Olivia will be kept indoors while she gets used to being a mum and carrying the baby around. She'll only have access to the tunnel and the caged enclosure until the team are sure she's confident enough to take her baby into the large tree-filled area. One thing's for certain, the new arrivals should be perfect playmates for each other in the future. It's been two weeks since the park welcomed its newest arrival, a female Loris. She arrived from a private collection in Cornwall, with no name and very little history. She was shy at first, but has now started to settle into her new home. Had to kind of bribe her with her favourite foods for the first couple of days to get her sort of eating and get her settled. So that was locusts and grapes, because she really likes both of those. Um, but over the last week or two, we've seen her really kind of adapting to the diet that we give and kind of trying everything we've got to offer. Um, so she's doing well. Um, it's taking notice of the other Loris in the house now that's been the big thing for her. Um, and of course, she didn't have a name when she arrived, so we've had to do that as well. Um, as we've got two other females in the house that have names both starting with the letter N, we've got Nora and Nikki, we thought we'd kind of continue that theme. Um, and we ended up with Nelly. So our new female's name is Nelly. And it turns out Nelly's not as timid as the team first thought. As she's come out of her shell, Nelly the elephant actually suits her a little bit better because she's sort of been stomping around her room, sort of shaking branches and marching round, kind of claiming the new kind of territory. Um, and actually, as it turns out, she's a very opinionated lady. Um, the sort of sweet and shy act at the start really was just because she was a bit nervous and when she's kind of got over that. Um, actually, quite a few opinions and she's a very vocal Loris. Lorises are nocturnal and those at the park have been split into two groups, with Bobby, Boo and Bruce moving into a newly adapted house, which they're enjoying. You're getting Bruce and Boo spending time sort of flirting a little bit and we've had a bit of mating from those two. Um, Bobby is a little bit younger. She's not come into season yet, as far as we know. Um, she's three years old, so she'll be getting towards that point. And she was a little bit taken aback at her very first male because she'd never met one before. Um, but as soon as she discovered that Bruce quite likes to groom and Bobby loves to be groomed, that kind of worked out really well. And that's what they've been doing, so we're really happy with how that's gone. Not a lot is known about this unusual species, and the team are keen to see if they can replicate the scenario with the lorises at the original house. So today, they're going to introduce male Axel to new female Nelly. Axel can be a touch unpredictable, and they need to work out the best social situation for him and his housemates. For now, the pair will only have contact through the mesh. Hopefully we'll build up some tolerance through the mesh and see some nice interactions before we open up completely. In true slow Loris style, it's a quiet and sedate start, with both primates content to eye each other up from a distance, as Steph and Marina watch on. But then it gets noisy. And when Axel moves in for a closer look, Nelly starts giving off loud warning signals. I think she's got a bit more attitude on her than Nikki, so it might be a better match for him. Axel is unperturbed, determined to get close to the new female. Nelly isn't impressed. She's had enough and lunges out at Axel. grabbing and biting at his fingers and toes. The attack causes a few minor injuries. Yes, he's got blood under the nail. She's taken the nail tip. That's OK. Marina isn't too concerned. It's actually going quite well. Axel's a really difficult individual. He's had a terrible traumatic life so far and he's just desperate for anything and everyone and he doesn't respect boundaries, he doesn't read the signs, he just goes for it. So Nelly coming in, very strong, clearly stating that I am not in the mood for your friendship now, is perfect and she's been so fierce about it, he's actually respected it and he's pottering about. So this for Axel is, is, is brilliant, he's respecting 
probably for the first time in a long while, a female saying no, which is so important if he has any chance of being social in the future. It's lesson learned for Axel, and he gives up altogether, giving Nelly the space she demands. It looks like this introduction may take some time. The bachelor woolly monkeys are in for a big treat today. The park has received a generous donation of natural honeycomb, full of sticky, gooey honey. It's something this troop has never had before. I think they might be a little wary at first, but I'm sure once they smell the sweetness of the honey, um, they'll soon realise it's a, just a delicious treat. Um, but yeah, they definitely wouldn't get this much sugar in their usual diet, so it is a very rare treat. Hannah is skewering the honeycomb in hard to reach places, so the troop has to work to access it. Raw honeycomb is packed with vitamins and antioxidants and has numerous health benefits, including fighting infections and improving heart health. She's also smearing some honey on the branches to replicate tree sap in a bid to encourage natural foraging behaviours from the group. Carlos is first out of the blocks, followed by Manny. Come on, Manny! The rest of the troop isn't far behind. But, as Hannah suspected, they're all a little wary of the unusual snack in their enclosure. Instead, they took into the more recognisable breakfast of cucumber and pak choy the primate care team have also distributed. At first, they ignore the delicious sweet honeycomb hanging from the branches. It's one of the youngest members of the troop, five-year-old Claude, who investigates the sticky treat first. Like all woolies, he's initially cautious, carefully investigating what the substance could be. He tries it, but then leaves the honeycomb still attached to the branch. The smallest of the boys is Cassius, he uses his tail to help balance as he checks out the honey from arm's length. He's interested, but guarded. A quick taste of one, then he investigates another. Confirmation, it's sweet and tasty. The leader of the group, and also its oldest member, 14-year-old Paolo, is the first to tackle a whole honeycomb. Soon, they all overcome their hesitation and enthusiastically devour the treat. They just took one monkey, uh, which I think was Claude, actually. He was the bravest. Um, he just had one taste, realised it was nice and sweet. And then once he started chirping and trilling, I think the others cottoned on and then they started trying it as well. Um, and now they're just going around the enclosure, uh, licking it off the branches. So they seem to be enjoying it now. It's probably a good thing that they didn't go straight away and just consume it. They'd probably get very hyper if they did that. And now this way it will just last them all day and they'll just keep going back to it. There should have been six members of the troop enjoying today's treat, but tragically, young male Lemmy, who had been part of the group, had to be put to sleep a few weeks ago. The primate care staff had been concerned about him for some time because he wasn't maturing and growing like he should. Health checks confirmed his internal organs were underdeveloped and he had pneumonia. The five remaining boys were quiet and subdued for a while. But they seem to have accepted his absence and life continues for this unique troop of males. It's a warm, sunny day at the park, and Tuan's group of six orangutans are making the most of it. They're outside enjoying their large enclosure and tucking into a bounty of whole cucumbers. Amy. To boost their hydration and keep them cool, primate care member Jarno is throwing in frozen lollies made with sugar-free squash. Awi, this is you. It's really hot day today and having ice lollies is perfect to cool everybody down. The group has been settled for more than a year now after Lucky and Roro resolved their differences and found a way to live together. For Lucky, it means mostly keeping herself to herself. 
The catalyst for this degree of harmony is the youngest member of the group, Hujan. Everyone loves him. Hujan just makes the group is nice and calm now, which is great. Hujan arrived at the park as a two-year-old and has thrived as part of this adult group, who've become his family. It's been a good learning curve for the youngster. Hujan watch everything, watch Tuan when uh, Tuan come to Roro, when Tuan meeting Roro. He witnessed it all. So growing up, he will be just superb. He will be perfect male, yeah, it's really good. Group leader Tuan is the ideal role model. Tuan is really, really nice, uh, proper gentleman, and he is fair with all the ladies in uh, in this group. And Lucky is always been sort of his favorite for night time, of course. But daytime, he's just with everybody else. He's, he's no problem, and he's he's really, really nice man. Monkey World is the European creche for orphaned orangutans. It's a huge success story, with creche graduates moving to zoos across Europe and becoming parents themselves. Tuan is a grandfather again, and Roro a grandmother for the third time. Tuan's son Kai and his former nursery mate Jolie have had a baby named Membelai at their new home in Spain, and Xiao Ning, who came through the nursery, has just given birth to her second child, Aquino, at Rostock Zoo in Germany. It's a credit to Alison and the team. The one thing that we know about orangutans is that if they're orphans themselves, odds are they're not going to look after their own babies. And that's exactly why the orangutan crash here at the park was set up, is to try and break that cycle of abandonment. So. I think it's ticked an awful lot of boxes more than we had even intended or planned. I'm still reluctant to say that we've got it cracked, but I think we're on the right track. The orangutan crash will continue to assist more youngsters develop strength, social skills, and climbing confidence. All great benefits when they settle into new homes and families in the future. next time on Monkey Life. Big news for the park and for one of the established chimp groups in particular. There are two new big intimidating arrivals heading this way and our initial plan anyway is to shake it up a bit in Brian's group. And recently rescued marmoset Jangles summons up the courage to join her new mate Reggie in the outside enclosure.